Jennifer Coolidge spent most of her early acting career days trying to grab every chance she got, which rarely happened. But how she went from that to the lady of the moment will surprise you. Jennifer Coolidge's recent success story is still unreal because she never imagined what she craved for so long would finally happen. But then the actress knows why it feels like this, and that's because she was given a chance to reveal herself earlier in Hollywood. The 61-year-old actress claims it's been many decades of auditions and rejections, and she struggled to be seen as a real actress. And of course, Jennifer never saw herself in a film like White Lotus, or even going as far as getting an Emmy Award because she already concluded that she'd only be getting cast as an extra. However, Jennifer didn't start in Hollywood with thoughts of becoming small. The actress was born in Boston into a family of six, and all of her schooling happened in the same city, as she went ahead to have her college education at Emerson College. And then the actress got into the American Academy of Dramatic Arts to begin a promising acting career in New York. Jennifer moved to Los Angeles when she was 21, and she didn't have it easy at all. She had to rent a room in a nursing home and share with other aspiring actresses with the hope of getting to live her dreams in Hollywood someday. When Jennifer first saw the film Pretty Woman, the actress could see herself in it, and her thoughts were massive because Jennifer knew bigger dreams were needed to break through in Hollywood. But she said there are many people she met in her acting career who made it a job to discourage her and tell her that it's not going to be possible for her to be famous. It's no news that Jennifer Coolidge is one of the funniest actresses in Hollywood, and she ventured into comedy while trying to nail roles as an actress. She started her comedy career with Gotham City Improv in New York, and at the same time, she was also working as a waitress at Canastelle's in New York. Jennifer was waitressing with another actress, Sandra Bullock, at the time. Then she continued her comedy career after leaving Gotham City Improv to join The Groundlings, and that was when she was first noticed by a casting agent who got her to feature in Seinfeld. Before Jennifer became known for her role as Stifler's mum in the the American Pie series. She had her first significant role as Jodie in the episode The Masseuse in Seinfeld. But then, while filming on Seinfeld, her mother was struggling with pancreatic cancer, and she said her mother mentioned how proud she was to see Jennifer make it to the TV before finally passing. Another fun twist is that Jennifer's comedy path was never in the plan. She wanted to be like Meryl Streep and dive into dramatic roles, and Jennifer said it was weird to her and her family members when they saw her doing comedy because she was never considered funny. But a friend noticed that she would make a good comedian and drove her to the audition for The Groundlings. It's no wonder how this friend of hers saw the comedy in her because there was a time Jennifer was applauded without opening her mouth at all. Christopher Guest, who directs A Mighty Wind, said, This moment happened when Jennifer and Bob Balaban walked onto stage and looked at each other without saying a word. And Christopher said, That moment caused the biggest applause he's ever heard. He mentioned why it was such a funny moment when he described Jennifer as being tall and Bob as being short. So that part where Bob had to look up to Jennifer without saying a word already spoke for itself, and Jennifer's gaze in return was one of the hilarious moments for the audience. So Jennifer is an excellent comedian, but she never gave up on acting, and she kept auditioning and getting cast as extras most of the time. And after 30 years of auditioning and having to deal with minimal roles with not such good news, it's understandable how the Emmy Awards on White Lotus was a massive shock for her. Because at her age, it's safe to say it was a very slim chance, but it's a good thing that fans got to enjoy her great talent no matter how late. About getting the award for her performance on White Lotus, the actress said, For all these years of thinking something like this would never ever come, it was all one big inarticulate moment. I've been around a long time, and I think my odds for this moment were pretty slim. And the crazy thing is, this moment would have been missed forever, because Jennifer didn't want to take the role on White Lotus. According to Jennifer, she wasn't prepared to act, as she was experiencing a mental health breakdown after COVID-19 happened. Jennifer thought the end of her career and life had come when she isolated herself, ate pizza daily, and did many other self-destructive activities for months. And then she got a call from Mike White, making her an offer to be in a film without even asking if she was interested. And she felt like she wasn't looking good enough to be in any show at all, but Mike encouraged her and could tell that she was afraid. A friend also stepped in to assure her to go for it and not mess things up. So she said, I can't tell you how close I am to ruining this whole thing for myself. It's just a great lesson in life. I'd never have forgiven myself. I would have sat down to watch The White Lotus and said, what the hell was I thinking? I'm an insane person. Even when the filming for White Lotus was going on, Jennifer was getting sick on set. She said this was because the boat scenes in the film were filmed on a real boat, and she had seasickness that caused her to throw up 
many times. And she ended up making other cast members inconvenient. Aside from comedy and acting, Jennifer is also very good with music, and she grew up knowing how to play the clarinet. She became an expert at this, and she got to attend the orchestra camp for three years. So she's talented that she has all it takes to make it in the entertainment industry, no matter how late. Also, Jennifer said that her acting career was revived due to Ariana Grande's impression of her on The Jimmy Fallon Show. Jennifer told Jimmy when she said, It was the beginning of a lot of cool things that happened to me. I was going through a dead zone. Not much was going on. Then Ariana did this imitation on your show and you encouraged her and this ball got rolling. Then Jennifer added that her friend encouraged her to send a message to Ariana and she thought she wouldn't get a reply at all. But she did it anyway. And she got a response. And soon she got featured in Ariana's Thank You Next video. In one of the scenes of Thank You Next, a scene from Legally Blonde was recreated. That shows Jennifer replaying her role as the nail technician. This impression and video made the actress even more famous and she got other exciting acting deals. But there's one line from Legally Blonde 2 that Jennifer is tired of already, which is, it makes me want a hot dog real bad. The actress jokes that whenever people meet her, they enjoy making that impression of her and she's had enough already. Jennifer didn't only struggle with her career, she also had things that she would rather not talk about in her personal life. Even though the actress has had many fulfilling romantic relationships, Jennifer struggles with barrenness and never got to have any children. And she also admitted that she had always had a mature look for her age. Jennifer said all she had to do to get drinks when she was 11 years old was to wear the neighbor's wig, and she would be looking old enough to pass for an adult. When many fans of Jennifer imagine her and her lifestyle, they might sometimes imagine her living in a princess castle with lots of pink and lovely decorations. But instead, Jennifer lives in a dark old house that appears gloomy, especially with the creepy and ancient paints on the wall. And of course, Jennifer believes that the house is haunted. Ben Feldman, an actor who has been to Jennifer's house to celebrate Halloween, supported this when he said, You can't use the downstairs bathroom because the ghost of a little girl is in there and so you have to go upstairs to the bathroom next to the room for her kimonos. This house is featured in the film The Beguiled. It was featured due to its iconic status and how well it fits into the film's storyline. Before Jennifer became famous herself, she liked to party in places where only celebrities were allowed in. But that didn't stop the actress as she found her way inside those clubs and hot spots anyway. She pretended to be one of the granddaughters of Ernest Hemingway. Jennifer intelligently did this by using the identity of the less known one among the granddaughters, Muffin Hemingway. All she ever needed to do to get admitted into parties and clubs was to alter a few of her appearances and say she was Muffin, and the door was opened. However, this got into her head so much that she misbehaved and was thrown out once and told never to return. Jennifer takes pride in saying that the ban is for Muffin and not for Jennifer. So with this trick, it's no surprise that Jennifer never gives up and always finds a way to get herself into the limelight. And now that Hollywood has shined on her, many fans wish it will go on forever because she deserves it. So what do you think of Jennifer Coolidge's life and career struggles? Share your thoughts in the comments section below and thanks for watching.